Hey guys, it's TF Nut. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another action figure review. This is going to be of the Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Watch Jujutsu Kaisen Zero version of Satoru Gojo. We have some new Jujutsu Kaisen figures for the SH Figure Watch line coming out soon. Next month we're going to get Yuta, and in 2023 we just got teased that we're getting a Suguru Gato figure. So really cool that we're getting some more SH Figure Arts, Jujutsu Kaisen figures. I'm really hoping they continue with some other characters like Maki and Umaki, as well as uh, Mahito, just to name a few. Uh, decided to pick this one up here because even though I knew it was going to be very similar to the previous Gojo, there was some new stuff in here I thought that was going to make it worthwhile. I'll give you a quick look at the packaging here. I'm not going to be doing photos around here, but you can see, you know, all the different stuff that comes with this figure, these different hands accessories. This is a bit of a wider box compared to the smaller boxes last time with some of the SH Figure Arts figures. It says Satoru Gojo, Jujutsu Kaisen, as well as the, uh, you know, basically the read up of what the SH Figure Arts line is. And we do have that Tamashii Nations quality sticker with the logos of Bandai, as well as Tamashii Nations Jujutsu Kaisen Zero images of the figure right there. This is new to me. We have a Bandai Namco logo there. Some images right there of the character with the name and SH Figure Arts and which particular version this is for. Lots of blue on the patching here, just the name of the character in the series there. Image of the figure on the top, as, as you can see. Some of the accessories, that's what it looks like on the bottom. Last but not least, they didn't have that many photos on the back here of what you could do with the character, but you know, I guess they showed off enough with, you know, different poses and the optional parts there. And I got this imported from AmiAmi, so I don't have a Bluefin distribution sticker. But there's a barcode just in case you need it. Let's go ahead and get this figure out of the packaging. And here is the figure out of the packaging. And at first glance, a lot of you are probably thinking, wow, this is pretty much the exact same thing as the 2021 figure. And in a way, you would be right. Very much a lot of reuse in the overall body with a few alterations. But what really helps this new figure separate itself from the old one all the are the new accessories like the different hands and some of the effects pieces and those faces me personally i do wish that this was more of an accessory pack that was a little bit cheaper without the body i could just put it on my previous body but i you know it wasn't that much expensive to begin with 55 bucks so i'm kind of okay with buying a new figure anyway let's take a look at those accessories see if it is really worth it with all that new stuff and then we'll take a closer look at the figure first of all we have an instruction booklet as you can see here it shows off all the different accessories how to interchange them how to use them and how to uh basically to carry your figure in case there's any paint that may rub off we tilt down a little bit you can see all those different accessories we're going to go to and we're going to compare i'm going to try to quickly compare some previous ones because there's just a tiny bit of reuse between some of these hands and previous ones first of all let's go ahead zoom in a little bit and you can see these hands here these are these more like oh like fingers spread out posed hands you can see the fingernails in there see some details in the palms but it's mostly just you know molded in this you know this light skin tone it's a tiny bit glossy there's a little bit of areas like on the back of the hand which is a little bit matte uh, i'm just going to bring out this one here these are the exact same as the previous one. You can see already the difference in the skin tone on the previous one on the left compared to the one on the right. I was trying to see, are these new at all? Trying to, you know, if I can actually hold these properly. Studying the placement of the fingers is a little bit difficult, but I do believe these are the same as before. And personally, I don't mind that too much. Uh, it's a bit of a concern because it could be like, you know, are we gonna get mostly reused hands? But that's not the case, because we still get a lot of new here. Like these hands, these are these open fingered hands. The fingers are a lot more straight. These look really good. You see the fingernails on there too. Details on the palms could be a little bit better, but they're fine for what they are. And we do have these, they, they look like he's waving hands. You know, you have the you know, all four fingers together and then the thumb right there sticking out a little bit. A lot of these hands, you know, two of each, and then we'll get to the ones that are like unique hands that don't have an extra set. We have these peace sign hands, really nice, like when he's uh, introducing Utah to the rest of the class. Just keep trying to focus up there. Yeah, these are really nice. I'm gonna be using these a lot. It's gonna be hilarious. Then we have two thumbs up hands. So that's cool. 
The thing that you notice, of course, because of the lighter and, you know, the different skin tones, uh, there might be actually a little bit of variation in the skin tone in the knuckles compared to the back of the hand. I can't tell, but, you know, interchanging hands is going to be a little bit difficult because of how these, you know, how difficult these are difficult, different these skin tones are, I should say. Now for the more unique hands. So we have this hand here for a curse technique where he puts both of his hands together. I, th I do dig some of the paint on the fingernails or it's actually mostly sculpted in the fingernails, but it tricks, you know, in the light, it kind of tricks you into thinking that the fingernails are a little bit brighter than the rest of the hand. And it's all one sculpt here. And these are different from the previous hands because you have the one hand where the, uh, you know, the hand, the fingers are sticking out on the left hand. If I can hold these, man, I'm having trouble holding these. We have a similar open sprawled hand here I showed off earlier, except we have a groove right there. That's for the red cursed uh, technique hand or uh, effect, I should say. And you can, I'm trying, I'm about to, I know I'm going to have problems during this review trying to pop this in there. Pops in there and stays in there rather nicely. And all that nice detail, it's a, it's a translucent red, but it's pretty dark to where it's not entirely translucent. There's some nice details with some like creases and waves or whatever going on there. I really dig that. We have a, a unique left hand for grabbing the collar. So the, uh, you know, the ring and middle finger are, you know, sculpted in there. And then you have these that are a little bit more separated. That's really sick. Last but not least, we have two fingers sticking out to create the veil. So that's really cool that they decided to give us that hand to recreate that pose. Now on to the faces. We have one face with the one eye revealed through the bandana. Really awesome scene when he's just going to town on Miguel. That was an awesome fight. It's cool that we got this. I do like that the we have nice printing on the eye right there. Nice paint on the mouth. Looks like there might be a little bit of a tiny splotch on the lip. That could be dirt and I could scratch it off later. I'm not going to do that right now. Pretty good details of, of wrinkles and folds and white paint where the bandana is. So that's, I think that's pretty nice. We have a more screaming face here, which actually has some really good paint in the tongue and the teeth. The way that the paint is separated there and it doesn't clump together you know no red or white bleeding on there those are small areas to paint on there it's not easy to nail that so it's good that they did that and then we have a little bit of white hair sticking out on the sideburns last but not least what's really sick is we have a cheesy smiling face so that's really cool that they gave us this I really dig that and the detail on the bandanas here again i didn't talk about them here but they're very similar you know the details on the bandanas with all the faces Especially these two since his eyes are completely covered that's nice separate actual like you can feel the actual groove where the bandana meets the skin so that's really cool one thing i am going to show off really quick if i don't break this okay yeah that pops off easily this unmasked head for the previous one oh boy it should be able to fit on there except you know when you're looking at it closely the difference in the skin tone because of the more pale or really darker i don't know if it'd be darker but it's a lot more pale a lot lighter on the new one, I should say, compared to how it's a little bit more flat on the previous one. One thing I want to mention is interchanging the faces with the head system is a little tricky. We have these soft plastic white tabs from the bandana, as well as these pegs that stick up that go into the head. There's these slots to fit these in here, so you'll have to angle it, push it in here. And before I do, sometimes one of these like the one on the left is a little bit shorter than the one on the right but it shouldn't affect going in there too much i'm not sure why it's like that but popping it in there you know it's a little, tiny bit tricky but it's not too bad so before i bring out the old gojo to do some comparisons i'm really hoping my camera picks this up but there is some new stuff i'm talking i want to talk about when it comes to the hair mostly like the uh there is a bit of paint variation it's like lighter paint on the front here once it goes towards the end of the spikes on the hair, I feel like it just kind of like dies off at some point. Uh, I don't know if I can pick it up, man. I, this is what happens when my computer breaks. I don't have my nice camera to show, show it off to you guys. But you can kind of see like a little bit of gray with the white in there. I feel like that at some point they kind of gave up on painting it all the way through. Or it's a stylistic choice to stop at a certain point with no more white paint and have it look a little bit more gray. Me personally, I wish it was all white and painted. The way that these spikes are done, 
you know, they're all pretty close together. It's all very spiky and it, it all goes over the place. So I have a feeling they were having trouble painting this evenly. I can kind of forgive it for that, but that's like my only big complaint mostly is the paint and the hair for now is the really biggest complaint I have. The actual sculpting in there, all those different waves, different lines and creases in the hair is really nice. The only other thing I can tell is that it looks like the, I don't know, you can, they hide it a little bit because of like the color of the white on the bandana start to blend in as you can see on the back of the gray hair and I could see some of that bandana paint there so that's a little I don't know man it's a little sloppy but it also kind of look like highlights in the back of the hair so I'm not going to complain about it too much because I can't tell if there's QC issues here or if there's something stylistic going on here what I do like is the sculpt on the bandana very similar to the other faces I showed off and you got the sideburns right there they're barely visible but still really nicely painted then we have this more stern face which has a little bit of a smirk to it which i like we do have this new collar which i'll compare to the previous one this is actually a little bit lower and wider so it doesn't cover up the chin that much and i dig that the rest of this body though i'm giving you quick looks at this body i reviewed this figure back like the summer of 2021 and there is not much different here compared to that one what you're seeing is what you're getting uh, lots of nice creases. It's mostly molded in this like dark, very, very dark blue, almost purplish plastic. In person, this looks a tiny bit brighter because the soft plastic and, you know, the shoulders and the arms here too, compared to the chest, which is a harder plastic. If you hear, hear a haul, that is, you don't really get that there because that's soft plastic. And, you know, uh, on camera, it's not that noticeable. You have to look really, really hard to tell the difference. So I'm not going to knock it too much. Uh, fists are the same as the previous one. Lots of nice creases and sculpting. Uh, it's very subtle creases, but I think it's good enough. On the sides of the arms, lots of creases around like the neck area and on the front. Uh, the way that this, this lining goes down with his uniform, looking really nice. Sometimes I had a problem with how these were sculpted, but they don't get in the way of the sculpting too much. And the articulation works just fine. Uh, we have these separate shoulder pads, so our uh, pieces, I should say. Not gonna complain about them too much. Then we got into the legs, long skinny legs. Um, looking good. Yeah, there's not much to say. There is no detailing on the back, but they, I think they were a little bit too small compared to something like, let me bring out Gohan. You can see there, you know, because it's a little bit wider in design, you know, the pants are wider. You can see that they had more room to actually add some sculpting instead of the back of the legs, like on this guy here. And then the, the shoes are the exact same as the previous one, even down to the, like the way the plastic's molded. One thing that's a little distracting is some of those metal joints in there. I just think it's a little too distracting. But yeah, I don't hate it. Bottom here. They put all that printing on the bottom. Good thing they did. They put on the back of the leg, like, uh, back of the leg, like they did with some Mar Marvel Legends back like three, four years ago. I would have been annoyed. Okay, so with that, of course, new head sculpts, difference in skin tone. New one has lighter skin tones, and the other one has a darker skin tone. But they're both still pretty glossy. You could look at the arms right there. The way that I think mostly like. The dark blues on the whole uniform, I think, are the exact same. It's like less of a year difference between the end of Jujutsu Kaisen Zero and the beginning of Season 1 of Jujutsu Kaisen. So I don't, you know, not much difference in his outfit there. That's what this other side looks like. Even the chest, all that looks pretty much the exact same. If you pay attention to, like, creases up here, how all that's a little uneven, it's the exact same. I feel like... What sometimes with some of the plastic where it looks glossy, I feel like there's some certain imperfections going on. Like something happened to make it look a little bit more glossy compared to the matte areas, like in the factory, something happened. It's a little bit more prominent and easy to see here. It happened a little bit on this figure, but not as much. But even like the way, I don't know what's going on right now, but this, this thing's kind of all out of whack. The way that they did all of this, uh, wow, you can actually see. That actually adds a lot more space. You can see what the pants look like. The way that they did this exact cut is the same here. The way that there's a little bit of a flap underneath all of that. But if you can see, 
we have a much taller and shorter, you know, I guess radiance or radi circumference, whatever the hell you want to call it. Oh, you know, the circle here, uh, geometry's hard. <laughs> um, it's just, it is different in collars. Okay. Brain dead TF nut, unfortunately can't speak right now, but you could see that it's lower and it's wider on the new one compared to the old one and i don't mind the old one but i do think a lot of the times when i'm trying to pose around it the mouth is getting way too covered chin's getting way too covered i have to pivot his head a little bit too forward to where he almost has a hunchback to make that work it's not horrible sometimes it's not ideal here though that's really not a problem even if i move it back when if i do figure out how to cover it you know it's making it look like he has to look all the way down to do that in neutral poses, you don't get that problem. So, hey, I, I dig that. Now we compare the shoes again. I'm going to put them right next to each other. As you can see, like I was mentioning, these are like the exact same sculpt all the way down to like, I think the exact same type of, you know, a way that they printed out the painting. Um, however, they did the plastic, I should say. There's a little bit of like a darker variation of brown compared to a little bit of a lighter brown, really a muted brown, I should say. Uh, cause this looks more, this is definitely brown, but this is, this looks more black than brown. Whereas this, like the soles of the feet look a lot more brown. It's easier to tell in person and not filming on an iPhone, unfortunately, when your computer is busted. You can't do, uh, HD videos on there, unfortunately. But you can see like the back of the legs, they don't have any sculpting at all. The way that those creases look on the knees. Yeah, so not much difference in, you know, body mold at all. They may have done some new sculpting. Actually, I don't know if they did or not. They may have done something new with these shoulder pieces that move around a bit, but I really don't know. So the fact that there's a lot of reuse between this figure and this figure might turn some people off. Now, articulation is the exact same as before, which is also to be expected. Pop off the head of the previous one, you could see a ball peg, you know, ball here and then the stick and ball going in there which is a system i like more than what goku has where it's like a hinge ball and then swivel it allows for a really good side to side you know a pivot i should say in this rotation and then up and down at the actual head is nice and we have an actual joint going into the body here uh so you know it allows for all this different range of motion rotating you can even rotate the collar a little bit the, I think that these shoulders are a little bit better because the previous ones felt really stiff in some areas to where I was really nervous that something was going to break. I don't get that here. I don't get that much resistance, but it still keeps a pose. All of this, like moving forward a little bit like a butterfly joint, pivoting all the way around. That's really nice. Going all the way out, that's really good. It even swivels up in there. You do get the double jointed elbow, standard wrist articulation for Tamashi figures. It swivels and has a ball peg at one end and then it hinges so you can make it go up and down or you can make it go in and out ball jointed waist goes all the way around forward and back side to side which this soft plastic piece will eventually pop out sometimes if you bend it a little bit too far and then it wants to like overlap on the hard plastic so just be careful there lots of nice range of motion you grab his stomach you even get a waist twist there and even another ball joint so all this great range of motion here at the waist since we have soft plastic not blocking the legs and go all the way out back Looks like that wants to block it a little bit, but it can go back still pretty far. We do get actually really nice splits because of the cuts here, not getting in the way. And we do get an upper thigh swivel in there. I forgot to mention the seam line in there. It's very much the same as the previous one. We do have double jointed knees, swivel here, and we have a more like toy biz style, the traditional pivot, which still works really well. And then uh, I think we, I think I mentioned the swivel here too. And then we have a toe hinge. Okay, size comparisons and measuring. This looks to be 16 and a half centimeters, give or take a few centimeters. And then we are looking at six and a half, also give or take a little bit there. Six and a half inches there. He's a bit of a taller character, so compared to Fushiguro and Yuji from the same line, he's going to be a little bit taller. If you compare him with a Marvel Legend, he, I guess, should be a little bit taller since, you know, SH Figure Arts and Marvel Legends don't actually scale together, but they're still the same height. Over on the far right, you can see just how short a Black Series figure like the first ever Mando is going to be next to Gojo. Overall, I ended up really liking this figure. It is not much different from the previous one, 
So that may turn some people off from getting it. If you have the previous one and you don't really care about getting a new one just because Utah is coming out, I think that's pretty understandable and you should stick with the previous one. However, if you want the new stuff going on here, or if you like this particular look, if you're a completionist of Jujutsu Kaisen merch, or if you know somehow you missed out on the previous one and you, right now your only option is to get the new one, which I think the previous one is still pretty easy to get, uh, you have this version here and I do recommend getting it. You know, the entire body besides the collar is pretty much reused, so there's that to consider. You know, you're paying for the same exact figure. Again, 55 bucks. I do wish this was more of an accessory pack, but that head sculpt and the blindfold faces, all of those are really nice. We do have a difference in skin tone here. So unfortunately, the hands aren't gonna be compatible with the previous one just because of how the skin tone comes out. You could repaint those if you wanted to. But we do have a lot of unique hands with this particular version of the character with some of the stuff he did. In Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, you could do a lot of stuff there. And he comes from the effects piece this time around, which I think is really nice. Overall, really nice figure. And I'm just glad that we're getting more Jujutsu Kaisen figures. Hopefully, we'll get some more unique characters in the future of this line. And Tomash Nations actually keeps supporting this line. We'll have to find out soon. Until then, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share, make your friends, follow me, Instagram for more content over there. And I will see you guys later.